error 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 I, I need help on this question based on question two it's a common test uh, march 2019 thank you it says that you're given the quadratic sequence 2 5 10 17. now they say this to you specifically because it should immediately tell you common second difference so remember what that means is if you find the first difference between these terms, we're going to have 3 as a difference between 5 and 2, 5 as a difference between 10 and 5, and 7 as a difference between 17 and 10. And then if you find the second difference, you find the difference between these differences, so you're going to have 2, 2. That 2 is going to stay constant as a second difference. That's what the quadratic sequence means. So. When they say write down the next two terms of the sequence, easy thing that you can do is just keep on writing twos along here as a common second difference. So, what is seven plus two? Well, that's going to be nine there. And nine plus two is going to be 11 over there. So, to find the next two terms, you just add on the first difference. So, 17 plus nine gives us 26 and 26 plus 11 is going to give us 37. Easy peasy lemon squeezy question. Okay, so 26 and 37. That's just them checking to see if you know what the sequence is doing. Okay, so now it says calculate the nth term. This is just a fancy way of saying find the general. Term. Now remember immediately when you see quadratic function or equation you should know it's a pattern a n squared plus b n plus c. Now remember always 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 a is a very important number. In a quadratic sequence your theory should tell you immediately 2a is equal to that second difference always in a quadratic formula. So remember our second difference was 2. So 2a equals 2, which means that a equals 1. Okay, so now here comes the tricky bit. What you need to think th of this as, when you get a quadratic pattern, it is almost the same as, well it is basically the same as a quadratic function. Remember your parabola. Okay, so when you get that a, that a value, it's just the leading coefficient. You need to think of n squared as being your x values and tn being your y values. So tn is the number, the value of the term at that position and n is the term position. Okay, so it's like basically x and y. So when you're trying to find different variables in your equation, remember the number of variables you have that you're trying to find in your equation is the number of simultaneous equations you need to have. So what we're going to do here we know now that tn is equal to, a is equal to 1, so we can simply say n squared plus bn plus c. So now, let's look at term 1. Term 1 has the value of 2. So we say that 2 equals, and we substitute 1 into n because it is term 1. So we say 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. So now let's manipulate this equation. I'm going to get it in terms of C. So C we can leave on this side. 2 minus 1 squared is just 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. And you take the B over to that side and it becomes a negative. So C is equal to 1 minus B. And that is our first equation in our simultaneous equations. Now if we look at term 2, given to us as 5. So that's basically the y value if x is 2. So 5 is equal to, and we substitute 2 where n is. So 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. And again, I'm going to try and get it in terms of c so we can make our lives easier. So 2 squared is 4. Subtracted from 5, we're going to get 1. And then 2 multiplied by b is 2b, take it to the other side, it becomes negative, and we're going to get c. 
and that is our second equation. Now, because we have two things equal to C, we can equate their left-hand sides. So we're going to get 1 minus B is equal to 1 minus 2B. If we subtract 1 from this side, we get 0. And we add B to that side, we get negative B, which means that B is simply 0. There is no B term. So now if we go back to our general formula, we found that A was 1, so it's just N squared. B is 0, so there's no coefficient of just N. So it's N squared plus C. How do we find C? We can simply substitute B equals 0 into one of these equations. So I'm going to put it into this equation. It's going to say 1 minus 0 equals C, which means that C is equal to 1. So we get Tn is equal to N squared plus 1. And if we go and look back at our pattern, if we substitute, this will be term 5 over here. And we found that Tn is equal to N squared plus 1. So term 5 is equal to 5 squared plus 1, which is 25 plus 1, which is 26. And that is what the term value is over there. So that means that we've definitely found it. So tips and tricks for quadratic sequence. First thing you need to remember, second difference is always constant, always constant. So between consecutive terms, if I have term 1 and term 2, find the difference. Term 2 and term 3, find the difference. And then their difference is your common second difference. Second thing I want to point out in your equation, that a, that leading coefficient, 2a is equal to your constant difference. So if you need to find the value of a, equate twice a to the constant second difference. Okay. And then lastly, to find b and c, you simply substitute in two other terms and their values and you solve simultaneously. Easy peasy quadratic questions. Okay. <laughs>